Well, as promised, I'm gonna finally do that video on my solar and electric system. So this will be multiple little clips put together to really explain what we've done. But before that, I do wanna share some videos from our drive-in. And the first couple are from last night when we were getting here. And the other one was this morning when we went out for a four-wheeler ride. And you'll see exactly why I just love having this place. And incidentally, this is my mom's 80th birthday weekend that we're up here for. So you might see her every now and again in the videos that we have. So enjoy these next couple of clips. So we're on the way into the cabin again and look what's deciding to run along the road with us. Nice to be out here again. sure how many of you get to, out to drive down the road and see mommy and baby antelope and then over here is a whole bunch more gosh I love having this place out here and seeing all of these animals love nature So when building your solar system, and by the way, cheat notes, because there's a lot that goes into this and by no way am I an expert on how to do this. I just trial and error and I tell you what, I wasted a lot of money and screwed up a lot. So I want to kind of share with you what I did and what's going to, or what's working for me. And it's going to be different for everyone out there. Um, but I really used a couple of specific different companies out there. And as I go through and talk about this, I will eventually put links in below of the different companies that I used. For example, you can see behind me, there are six 100 watt solar panels and they all came from Windy Nation. I found them to be a great value. And when I bought my first pair with, a, with its first charge controller, um, it got to my house and one of the panels had a whole cracked face. I called them, sent them a picture and two days later I had a brand new panel. Um, sent out to me to replace it. So their customer service has been outstanding. Their value is really good. And they are set up in what's called um, series. So I'll explain a little bit more about the difference between series and parallel um, setups on your solar panels as you go. And, you know, I decided that I needed about 600 watts worth of power which they're never going to generate that. They always say that that's what it's rated at. They're not. I mean, I would say the most I've ever seen come out of this on an absolutely perfect sunny day with the perfect sun alignment is maybe just over 500 watts, which is more than enough than what I need to do. So um, let's walk over there and let's take a look at what they are, how actually I should say, I set them up and incidentally, um, one of the first mistakes that I made was the gauge of wire to run the power, the direct current DC power from the panels over to the cabin. I was using 10 gauge wire, which works and it's fine, but it's just can't move the amount of amps that I was hoping it would. So my full system is run off of eight gauge, which is a pretty big wire, all copper. So it runs a cleaner amount of energy and you get less loss through the systems as you go. So um, let's take a look and I'll share more as we go. So one of the important things when setting up your solar panels is to know the angle 
that your panels need to be set at. And mine, I change throughout the year. Um, in the winter time, you can see I've put blocks behind the back of it to stand them up more straight to catch the sun at its lower angle. And in the summer, they're more up and down because the sun is almost straight up and down and I take the blocks back out. But here are the panels. And as you come around back here, you can see where I put blocks under it for the winter to try to get the angle right. And right now, we're late in October and we're still getting great, uh, great power from this. But one of the things I did for mine is I set them up in series. And what series means is that I have all the positives running together and all the negatives running together so that I am only pushing 12 um, volts through the system to my 12 volt batteries. The other option is in parallel, which would multiply the amount of amps that you're pushing, but keeps the voltage at a, at a set um, number, or I'm sorry, the other way around. It's gonna keep your amps at the same and your volts will increase. I chose this, I tried it both ways with my panels and I suggest you look it up because I learned all this stuff by doing research. But what I did that's also different is I did not use those quick connectors that all solar panels come with. They never worked. When they got wet and rainy and stuff like that, they started to short out on me. So all of my panels are hardwired together and soldered so that I get as clean and efficient of energy transfer as possible. Then when the, once they're all connected together, all six of them are connected together, they run into a big 10 amp, or I'm sorry, eight gauge line. That eight gauge line then, positive, negative, runs along the ground. And incidentally, that white pipe is gonna be where it eventually runs through to help protect it, but then it goes into the side of the house. So let's go inside and I'll show you what happens once you get that 600 watts, if possible, or in this case, I'm supposed to be able to generate 30 amps with these solar panels inside and what has to happen for it to become electricity. So once the power comes inside, it's got to go into what's called a charge controller. And right here are the two cables that come in from the solar panels to the charge controller. And two different types of charge controllers and I happen to have the MPPT. It's a far more efficient um, charge controller and initially I had a Renogy charge controller which I absolutely loved but when I added the wind generator to it I had to get a controller what's called a hybrid controller and it's going to take in solar and the wind power and convert it then um, from there. So the charge controller takes all of the, the DC energy that's coming in off of the solar panels and it converts it into the appropriate 12 volt power, which then drives it down into the two batteries. Now these two batteries are very expensive Renogy self-heating, as you can see, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Sometimes you can get them on sale through Renogy and I will set their link up below for you all to look at as well. But with the power I'm generating now, I generally get about 60 to 80 amp hours a day generated by the solar panels, which if you want to know how many watts that is, just multiply that number times 12. So if you're generating 60 amps worth of power, you multiply it times 12 and you've got 720 watts. So this, these two batteries between them hold 2,400 watt hours in them. So they have a lot of, lot of power to them. And the great thing about lithium iron phosphate versus what I originally started with, which was lead acid, is that you can take these all the way to zero in their charge so that you truly get the full you know, 200 amp hours or 2,400 watt hours out of these things without damaging the battery. And you can run them down four to 5,000 cycles before they go bad. So I've got 10 years worth of solid good batteries here. The lithium iron, I had 300 watt lithium, I'm not lithium, I'm sorry, lead acid batteries, but you can only drain them halfway down and they're only good for a few hundred cycles before they start losing their charge. So they were not good. It's how I started and I wasted six, $800 on them 
but I learned a lesson. Make sure you go and spend the money on the batteries because I think that and the charge controller are the two most important parts of your system. So from the battery, we have to go into an inverter. And an inverter is gonna take this DC power that is in these batteries and it's gonna convert it into AC power. So I decided to go with AC in the house because it was easier to find appliances, it was easier for lighting and light switches and all of that. So my decision was to go AC. A lot of folks stay with direct current, the DC, because it is a more efficient way and it uses less energy, but it, I've got enough power that I didn't have to worry about that. So the red box here is what is called an inverter. And this is a 2000 watt inverter. And I'm gonna upgrade it to a 3000 watt because there are certain times that the 2000 isn't quite enough. Like when I try to turn on my air compressor out here to do some work, it just won't push it over. It's good for vacuums, it's good for fans, it's good for things like that, you know, charging and, and lights in the house, but it will not push bigger things. Well, how they work is the energy goes in from the batteries from below, as you can see these cords underneath here going up into it. And out the top, there are three plugins. And I created double male ended extension cords that are plugged in there. And from there, I take them and I go into wall outlets. And you can see I have three. And that's how I created zones in the, the cabin for electricity. The top zone or the top plug up there, that one goes upstairs into the girl's loft. The middle plug-in, that is the kitchen zone. So it runs my refrigerator and the lights in the kitchen. And the bottom plug is my lower zone, which runs my living room. You say, well, where's your fuse box? Well, the neat thing is it's built into the inverter. The inverter has um, fuses built right into it that if there is a power surge or something goes wrong, it'll pop and it'll shut down the power. So it does have surge protection built into it. I'm not just uh, running hot wires all over the house. It's, it is somewhat protected. Up to this point, we've had no issues with it. So the other part of this, and I'll show you outside in a second, um, is the wind power. And the wind power comes in on three lines. So solar comes in on two, positive and negative. Wind comes in on three, and it actually comes in as an AC current, not a DC. So it can travel further distances and, and lose less energy. It becomes more efficient. But the thing about that AC power is it doesn't have a shutoff. The DC coming out of the solar panels, the charge controller can shut it off once the batteries are full. And you can see right now, not even in full sun, and I'm, I'm generating 16 amps, which is about 220 um, watts at this point, and we're kind of mid, late afternoon. But what happens is if your wind generator is going and your batteries are full, it's still gonna generate that power. And that's where this little green overflow basically comes in. It's called a load dump. And it takes any additional energy that can't go into the batteries because the batteries are full and it burns it off in the form of heat. So those are coils that burn heat and it can burn off, that little thing can burn off 500 watts at a time. It'll never generate that even though I do have a 500 watt wind generator. It would take 100 mile an hour winds consistent to generate that. 30 mile an hour winds will get me about 50 to 80 watts. So it just kind of in the winter time helps offset the lack of sun, but it doesn't do an amazing job. If that was your only power source, probably be in trouble out here. The solar seems to be way more efficient. So that's how we run power into the house. It, it works very, very well for me. Um, the other two alligator clips that you see on here, those go to my, uh, this one and that one, those go outside to my 12 volt pump that runs my shower and my sinks in here. So um, the other little thing I'll, I'll actually show you. Oh, and, and incidentally, Dyna Living is what my solar, or I'm sorry, my wind generator is. And I'm gonna go out and show you that in a second. But this little thing is a range extender for cell phones. And it has added two, at minimum, two bars of strength. And I can actually use my phone as a hotspot now out here and do Zoom meetings and work from my cabin 
even though the cell signal is fairly weak out here. So something that off grid wise has been a great addition. And again, I've got the power to run it. So this system, the way it's set up, running a mini fridge, my fridge is a right at about four cubic feet, part freezer, part refrigerator, running all the lights, the running the water pump and charging all of our other um, electronics. I have never seen the batteries go below 81% of a full charge. Even on days where we've had cloudy, rainy days the whole time, the power has stayed up and the solar panels will generate two to three amps of power even during the rain. So it's a very efficient system and I have absolutely been impressed with it. So let's go outside and I'll show you the wind generator and how that works. Well, there's my Dyna Living 500 watt wind generator. And I, as you can see, I put it up on a pole and we get quite a bit of wind here in the winter time and that thing will get humming pretty good. And I know in past videos, I've shown that, but it uses three eight gauge wires coming out of it. And you can see, I run them down the side of the house right over here. And they go down under the house and come back under where that charge controller is. But it's one of the interesting things that I found out about these, and I had said it when I was inside, is that those wind generators are only generating AC power. So it has to take AC power, convert it to DC, drop it into the batteries, the batteries kick it back out to the inverter, or the inverter creates it back to AC. So it, it seems kind of a redundant, but you got to protect the system and make sure that you're not going to overcharge batteries or burn up wires with uh, too much power running through. So with that, I'll probably put a little bit more of my weekend with my mom up, but I do appreciate you watching. And again, today when we were out for our four wheeler ride, we could not find a cloud in the Colorado sky. Please comment and let me know what you thought of this. If you have any questions or recommendations to my, to my setup, I would love to hear it. Thanks for watching. And remember, do it yourself.